Hello! So, I have a confession to make. I don't own any Harry Potter books. I own a lot of books, but Harry Potter is not one of them. And I love Harry Potter. It's one of my favorites. But I was sitting, staring at my bookshelf, absently realizing this, and I was trying to figure out why. And I realized it's because Harry Potter isn't a series that I feel personally, personal ownership of, I guess you could say. Lots of the series that I really love, I feel a personal ownership and a connection to. They're my favorite series. They're, you know, part of me. I, you know, reading Robin Hobb, I made one of my best friends. That's our thing. Um, reading Terry Pratchett is something that, you know, I really got into. I share with my dad. My whole family has very strict um, Terry Pratchett rules. My dad has to read it first, and then my mom reads it, and then I read it, and then my little brother reads it. That's the order it goes in, and it has to be that way to the level where even if I go to a library and rent the new Terry Pratchett book, I still give it to my dad first. And Charles Delint, who nobody knows about, unfortunately, but he's one, he is my favorite author, tied with Terry Pratchett for my favorite author. I love them both. But these are series that I feel a personal connection to, to the level where when I moved out of home, I came to the realization that I owned barely any books because my parents are huge bookworms and why would I buy something if my parents have a copy of it that I can read anyway? But then when I left home, they said that they owned all of their books and wouldn't let me take them with me, so I had to start buying my own, which resulted in a very giant list of books that I was looking for and tracked down secondhand. And Harry Potter never made the list. And I think it was because I didn't feel ownership of Harry Potter. Not because I didn't love it, but because it wasn't my thing. It was our thing. It was this mass delusion, this mass obsession, which made it not personal in a weird way. Because as much as I loved it, I didn't feel the need to own it in the same way. They kind of have it physically with me, because Harry Potter was with me anyway. It was, it goes without saying that you love Harry Potter. It's, you know, if you're on Tumblr and somebody says they're not in the Harry Potter fandom, everybody just kind of goes, what? What? Everyone's in the Harry Potter fandom. It's the law. But the books I need to own are the books that I can only get from the paper. They don't have fandoms in the same way. They they kind of exist entirely in this thing. If I don't have a copy of Memory and Dream, I can't get it. But I don't have to have a copy of Harry Potter to get Harry Potter. Harry Potter exists outside of the books, which is one of the incredibly exciting things about this series, that it's actually managed to transcend paper. It's, you know, it, yes, it's made it to movies, but it's outside of the screen as well. Harry Potter exists independently of any of the traditional ways through which we typically experience stories. I mean, not only in the fact that it's got fan fiction, but just the fandom is ever-present and always there. And if you're stumped for something to have a conversation with, start talking about Harry Potter. They'll either get really into it or why are you having a conversation with them? They're not that into Harry Potter. But that's kind of the thing that I realized is I don't ha own a Harry Potter book because I don't need to experience it in through paper in order to experience it. And don't get me wrong, one of these days I will get around to buying the Harry Potter series. But I don't need to to have Harry Potter around because Harry Potter is always there. And that's just so cool.